only a little after nine. Okay. Do, 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 do. Da -da. Good morning. Good morning. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> Welcome to the Sun Dragon Side Show. I have to walk all the way around the table. The Adventures of Liz and Rebecca. <laughs> it's so long. It's so long. <sighs> Hi, I'm Rebecca. <laughs> I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber. And kind of clear. Probably going to be warm and hot and muggy, but, you know, Brevard, North Carolina. I'm you Liz. Know. I'm the minion there. Do we have rain in the forecast? I feel not, like... Not, supposedly not today, <laughs> and supposedly not tomorrow, but it was like a 9% chance when I looked, so chances are we'll get rain, but we might not, it's... It's Brevard. Brevard. Yeah. Um, hi, so, <laughs> it's Tuesday, it's our Monday, it's time for the Tuesday check-in of all the fun things that we have been working on, and part of me was thinking, I really haven't done much this weekend, but then maybe I have in, in ways that I don't realize. Or some of it's stuff I was working on last week that I may not have updated y'all on. But I like to start with you, Liz. Yes. Because then I've I don't. finished things. I don't talk the whole time. Made new things. and Yes. And for people who missed it on Thursday, no dreads. No dreads. Yeah. They're going. They're coming back in. They'll, they'll be back in after my jury duty. Yeah. So the weekend, not. And her hair is is short, and curly and cute. But don't tell her that. <laughs> of course, Kathleen goes. I'm not going to comment on her hair because she'll do something <laughs> with it. <laughs> way back. Way when back. When it was in, longer. When you it was didn't longer. Have the dreads. And I wore it. Normally, I wore it all twisted up. And yeah. when it was longer i'd wear it down occasionally and the, half the time that was just because it was still drying yeah it was right? still drying or whatever yeah. and someone would make a comment about oh your hair looks cute and i would just doop, pin it up and so don't, don't tell her, her hair is cute <laughs> anyway. you know yeah anyway so um, what i've done this week oh she got fairy oh hair, i got though, fairy hair too in, I don't know if it shows up on camera. Oh, I see little sparkles. I see little. She got used like teal, right? Yeah, there's teal and, and a light green. And I got I got purple in, but see you see some. I don't think it, it. It's really hard for fairy hair to show up on camera. Yeah, because it's like sparkly, but the cam well photos tend to be like that's an error, and they you know anyway. Sorry. Go ahead. Anyway, I finished my sweater. It's, it's really pretty. And take my word for it, it's much softer than you think it would be. Yeah. I see I see your Morse code, like yeah. a little bit right there. Yeah. I don't, uh, maybe there. Yeah. And if it's anywhere it's, else, it's I don't really see it. It's running from here down. Okay. There's like, maybe that was oh, an end. That's an end. Never mind. That's a seam. I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to call it Morse code. Well, it's, okay, when, when stuff is this open and you weave in ends, it's going to be thicker. Yes. It, that's just what yes. it is. So it, right? it looks like a scarf. And and it's kind of like, that's why I don't do Russian joins, just to, as a really brief squirrely aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, is, is that makes things thicker. Like, if it's not really open like this, weaving ends in behind, you have more of a chance of hiding it. Whereas a Russian joint is really cool, but you it might be a little more noticeable in the front. Well, and it's thicker, so, right? like, with this, it's... There's no way not to have that show though. It's it's a it's where I ran out of my first ball and joined yeah. a second ball, and so did you only use two balls, mostly, uh, or I used a ball and a half, I guess, on the body, and then, oh, and then I that, yeah. mm -hmm. I have lots left over, but um, it was sport weight on a size ten needle, so I overlapped the yarn and knit like five or six stitches because it's sport weight linen and then i went and wove ends in mm -hmm. later but yes there looks like there's a scar on but my... unless you're looking for it and most yeah, only okay. knitters tend to be looking for it no one's gonna see it it's beautiful i was about to say i think i don't know if i finished my sentence of um it's much softer than you think linen should be so what did you do i soaked it in baking or, soda or was and when she knit water for 12 hours and then i ran it through the washer and dryer twice and i will still continue to beat it up this week. It's got lovely drape to yes. it. So this is what linen feels like Oh, without. God, that's, yeah. That's that's totally different. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think to the uninitiated, they they both might not feel like super soft. Yeah. But um, but there's it's a getting definite softer. difference. It's getting softer. between your crochet and crochet is gonna also have it feel a little different. Yeah. But there's definitely a difference. Yeah. There's yeah. So I did finish the sweater. Yay! I'm gonna make another one. It's so it's cute. It's super cute. Um. And stylish. And and it is your approximation or version or adaptation of Il Grande Favorito. It's right? Il Grande Favorito split and down the front yeah, and garter is, on the top. That's a Lisa Hahn pattern that is a pullover, so it's done in the Isabel round. Kramer. And so ugh, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, I'm I'm <laughs> still waking up. Those are some of our favorites. Yeah. Aren't they are they both German? No. Isabel Kramer might be. I don't know. It sounds I German. just like it might not anyway. Be. anyway yeah so Isabel Kramer sorry it, it, we put the, a link in the description whenever yeah. we do this so. the Il Grande Favorito if is like a pullover and so but you start at the collarbones and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and, and then, then you, you add on stitches add on stitches and so what I do is when I come across to add on I only add on half, half the stitches and go back and go around. back and add on the other half and then um and if that doesn't make sense don't try it yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it does make sense have fun and so. i do the whole top in garter because or the body in garter because i don't like purling um and then with the sleeves to make them look uh see you can kind of see some of the and i don't even think you can but i think i think the garter you do you can't necessarily tell it's garter when it's in this, this open yeah when 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 it's such a big needle for a thin yarn yeah it, it just looks cool. And then for the sleeves, I do textured sleeves, which is code for Morse code. And um, yeah. anyway. I think if you had done this in stockinette, um, it would still look really similar. Oh, yeah. Because of the open work. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then beating it all up and everything. Yeah. So I did this. And then the hats that I made last week didn't fit. Like, because... I was like, I don't want to go that far. And so I didn't. And then I realized, oh, crap, they don't fit. So is this because um, it's just been so long since you've it's made been it so long Columbia since I made it. Yeah. And well, I'm so way back in the day when I made it, I used a G hook, which is what the pattern calls for. And this time I'm using a seven, which is a half a millimeter difference. It's bigger, bigger. But, yeah. But it came out too small because instead of eight of the, of the increase rounds i only did like seven because i was like i'm getting tired of this <laughs> oops sorry <laughs> now i have to find that i'm gonna do this so i can find that and bleep it out okay sorry and um anyway then i didn't do <laughs> enough um straight rounds and so they didn't fit and so i made them fit uh, sorry uh -huh. i'm bad no, you're not. Anyway. <laughs> oh, and I put I put a flower in them. Oh, so you you adapted the pattern yeah. a little bit. That's super yeah. cute. So I did that one, and I did that one. What yarn is this? This is the Liana. Oh, I thought it was the footprints no. at first. No, no, I recognize it now. Yep. The Liana, and it is, is really soft and squishy. It's a linen, and was it viscose nylon. or nylon? Mm -hmm. Funky kind of almost art yarn from um barocco and i think they stopped making it yes yeah it wasn't necessarily flying off the shelves for us it was cute but they're the 50 gram skeins so there wasn't a lot of yardage did you need more than one for that hat or was it only one i um managed to get it out of one you had to be creative i um <laughs> shortened the the depth of the uh -huh. hat just okay. one row and it worked fine does so, that mean lots of bobby pins to keep it on your head maybe well maybe regardless of whether or not it's shorter i still need bobby pins too i used to tell everybody yeah i safety pinned it to my head because you know yeah, yeah. um wow i'm really tired it's just hitting me i'm like whoo i woke up in the middle of the night the the cat was threatening to attack me you know um and then spontaneously woke up at 6.05 because I forgot to set my alarm. So it's a good thing my circadian rhythms are just going like, too much daylight, get up. But um, I'll, I'll be with it. 
later today. Right. I just I did a lot yesterday too. I think yeah. I had a meeting, a town meeting to go to. Um, you did videos. I did two videos. Um, for I'm like I'm finishing sentences. What? Uh, I did my newsletter really, really early just to get it out of the way, and I cooked dinner. So, woo! Okay. Um, what was I talking about before that? We were talking about that. Talking about the Liana. Um, um, do you have anything else? What, what is the brown doing out on the table? Is that something? I, it, I what brought it. It's mine. I'm going to make another yes, hat. Yes, I was like, this is yarn we have in the shop, but we're moving out, and I think you bought it. So, yeah. you're going to make another hat I'm out gonna of I'm going to make brown. another hat. Okay. I'm on a hat kick. I it happens, know. especially when you take out your dreads and suddenly, like, she doesn't wear the hats with the dreads. So now yeah. you have a reason to wear the hats. Again, yeah, kind of well, if I get picked momentarily. for jury duty, I want to have something to, you know. Hats are okay head. in jury duty? Yes. Okay. Just checking. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new sound. Yeah, it's an 828 number, but it says wireless color. I don't even know. They can leave a message, right? Yeah, maybe. All right, so let's see. Either last week or this weekend. One of the things I did, which I did not bring in, because people have said, ooh, I want that yarn, and it is not a yarn we sell in the shop. I actually added a whole skein of Yarn Baby's flowers to my sweater oh, that wow. I'm making. Like, I got to sleeve separation, and I knit until the ball was gone. I, this was Sunday. I was watching movies, and I just, like, I'm probably at, you know, down here on it now. So if every once in a while I just knit through a whole skein of yarn, that sweater will finally get finished. But that is a beautiful, it was a jam of the month. Yarn Baby is doing jams of the month, like mystery dyes for people. And she's picking a song and dyeing yarn inspired by it. Um, I think this... It's either this month or the one that's now upcoming is Lizzo's Truth Hurts. And I really want that too, but I bought a whole sweater quantity of flowers by Miley Cyrus back in like January, February. So I have to take, I have to be on a diet for a yarn outside of the shop until I finish that. Um, but anyway, so I'm making progress on that one. I really, I think I will kind of look like a striped tiger when it's done, but in a good that's way. That's cool. And in a way that I think it's probably going to be like my home sweater. I might wear it in once when I'm done, but I, we've had a few people who are like, Ooh, that yarn that I saw. And it's, mm, don't sell it. I try really hard not to bring in yarn here that we don't sell. Um, and especially that's a limited color way. Cause like I could say, Hey, go get it from yarn baby. But I don't think she's dying that one anymore. So, you know, mm. anyway, um, we got in more of our, uh, our I Am Dragon kits, which the Indie Dyer uh, Fiber Fairy, who's local, had put together kits for this, this, what will be a cowl when it's done, for yarn crawl in three different colors. And between online orders and people coming in and going, ooh, we had sold out and and i was even working on this one and uh, then people wanted this color and we sold out so we finally have them back it's a single skein of yarn and beads to co go with it it's and a little magnetic and a, yeah clasp. a magnetic clasp and um the only thing you would need other than needles in the pattern which don't come with it is a bead needle because you string the beads on ahead of time um, but so I started working on this again. It's a little bit bigger, I think, than the last time I showed it off. I'm on row 50 something right now, and there's a hundred and you know, I'm not quite halfway through the rows, and the rows get longer as you go. So, still gonna take me a little while to finish this guy, but he's super cute, and I can't wait for him to be done. So, that's something I've been working on. And what's really kind of fun about this is the pearl side is is the right side, which doesn't happen very often. Like this is the the side with all the knit stitches, but the pearl side and what you do following the pattern is going to make the little scales. It's not a complicated pattern. I think the most complicated part was getting the beads on my yarn, and then they have a recommendation for how to like every few rows you're casting on nine stitches on each end after a, like a scale repeat and they're like do this double 
loop thumb cast on thing, which they don't tell you how to do because they're they're using the ref a reference book. I think a backwards loop cast on can probably work just fine because what it ends up doing is is you get these little tabs. This is the only way to kind of add on enough to get to the scale. But then the tabs, in theory, are going to be tacked down after you block it. So they're not shown anyway. So if they're a little tight or different than prescribed, I think it's fine. So add on stitches however you like on the edges. Um, I'm doing a class on this. I'm trying to look over at the thingy. August 12th and 26th, I want to say. Those two Saturdays, if you'd like to make one with me at the shop. Um, I made minuscule progress on my footprint sock. This one went in timeout for a while, but then at my, the meeting that I went to yesterday, I got through the, um, gusset decreases. So now I just get to knit and knit and knit and knit until I get to the toe. Yay. I have ordered more footprints. Got a little bit of a hot mess coming off of it. Um, we had a knitter who made a top out of, I want to say, just two. Mm -hmm. Like, she's skinnier than me, but she only needed, like, two balls of this to make a really pretty top. And I want to say... It, it, it was gorgeous. I can't remember which pattern she used. But, um, so we're getting five more skeins of every color in. So if you're interested in that. And she she loved working with the yarn. And she, like, she wore the top in. It looks like it's going to be fantastic for the summertime. So, um... Let's see what else. Um, I, ooh, because I finished the top that I'm wearing, which is the Scrappy Granny Tee, which came out a bit oversized, but my I couldn't get my gauge as small as hers without going, like, super teeny tiny on the hook, and I just didn't want to. And I measured when someone came by wanting to make this. My gauge got bigger down here anyway, so it's nice and flowy because my gauge is even bigger down here than it was up here. And that's because as I went, I just... Stop you kind of well, <laughs> that and you kind of loosen up once you get into you the rhythm of stuff. And and that's another thing to keep in mind if you do a gauge swatch is that your gauge can change over time. So do your best with it. And especially if it's like close, but maybe a little big, you still may want to go down it because a lot of us loosen up over time. Some of us don't though. So because I finished this, I gauge swatched for my Aster T. I wound yarn and gauge swatched and found the needle that I want to use for the body. And so I have just barely <laughs> started. And this, this is going to be bigger than, the, it's going to be 44 to 48 inches, something like that for my torso. Because my girls are big. So I'm on a 40 inch needle, which was kind of awkward to start the ribbing for that first row, trying to push it around a 40 inch. That's why sometimes a 32 is better even though it's a lot smaller than the circumference of what you're working on. But now I've got the ribbing going. I'm only supposed to do this ribbing for three quarters of an inch or something. I think That's I'm going to... not bad. It's not bad. I may push it to a full inch because I might be making this longer than recommended because, you know, um, I like to cover my pooch. Anything that's curvy down in here. Although I have been, like... I'm almost tempted to get some some dresses from from that bloom chic mm -hmm. place and if I do that then I don't know how all these tops will fit if I have something flowy on I haven't been pushed over the limit to, to actually most of them are are not going to be fine. as flowy as mine yeah. so you'll be, you've got more poofies, you, I've got poof which you, which yeah. suits you yes. so you know um, but just as a reminder I we have not put these up online we only have so many of them left so if you are an online shopper, just contact the shop because I'd like to make promises I can put things up online. But lately, my self-care has involved not overworking myself too much, which means sometimes it's hard to get everything up online. Um, and inevitably, even when you're like, hey, I'm going to do this because we have time, people come in. It's and, been busy. I mean, yeah. in a good way. It's been really busy at the shop lately. But that means I can't do as much online stuff or other things, multitasking and trying to get everything done as usual. So I'm using White Squirrel Shuffle from Yarn Baby, and we're getting more of this. We still have some of this stuff left in, in the online shop, the full skeins. Um, we're out of 
the mountains are calling in full skeins, but we're working. We have some old batch mini skeins. Um, I have placed an order with her. I've placed an order with, with a few of our regulars. Um, the ones that are indie dyers or like Theater Brook, it's her farm and stuff. It doesn't happen overnight. They don't have stock to ship right away or resources to just pull things right back out the door. So we'll get them back in when we can. Um, I've already talked over email with Lisa mm -hmm. from Feeder Brook, and she is visiting family, and she was over in Ireland. So when she gets back, she's going to send us a bunch of yummy and at least one new colorway. Ooh. Yeah. Which I forget, it might only be a six month colorway. She's starting, she's also starting to do, I can't promise this yet. I don't know if and when we're going to get it. She's starting to do limited um, yarns of the month, which if we can get in on it, we might have limited access to like stuff we can only get once a month. I don't know though. So try to rein in your excitement because I don't know if and when that's happening. Sometimes that can take four to six weeks to get anything in from her because there's there's a lot going on and there's only a few people doing it like us here there's only a few people doing yeah. it anyway getting back to the aster tea that has little flower texture things at the top of it so i have a long way to go but these are the three colors i want to use at the top and i was thinking about doing a fade but i've changed my mind a little i'm thinking like i'm gonna do one row one row one row and then maybe go back the other way or maybe just repeat like this does like a fade, but instead of trying to plan and, and map it out with how many rows of each, I think it's going to change color every row and, and I'll just keep the same pattern front and back and we'll that see what I fun. get through. It could be really fun, I think, because then I can have many, I can be like, yeah. Um, all right. The last couple of things are crochet to tell you all about that I am working on. Um, I did rows three and four of a granny square for my um, tips and tricks channel. And so this guy was my little guy I was using for filming, right? And he now has four rows. The Ariana, I think it's called, the cardigan that I want, that I'm trying to make that has crochet and then some knit trim on it. Uh, you have to, I have to make over 40. I've lost track. I think it's 46, but it's something like that. And I was doing my assembly line. We don't count this one. I have, I have made 20. And this is, this is what 20. Oh, I dropped one. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh-huh. This is what 20 granny squares looks like that have this five rows. 20. That's not even half of what I need for my cardigan, though. This thing's going to be huge. And I haven't even made the triangles yet for it. So I'm trying. I'm trying to get through this. Um, I, the green on this, I officially ran out of my first skein of green. And so the 20th one for this, for half at least of this outer row, I had to use, oh, my sample just fell on the floor. Um, I had to crack into a second skein. I have this much left of my purple, which is attached to my sample, and my hook is now on the floor. Uh, my dark purple. Let me see. I only have the other one that has two rows is my light purple, but because they're smaller rows, I still have this much left of my first game. So I'm probably going to need, or not probably, I'm going to need a third skein. Here's my third skein of green, because I've wound up two already. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot of. Oh, and I haven't wound. I haven't sewn in any of my ends yet. <laughs> no, why would you do that? <laughs> there's a lot of. There's some good there's reasons a, there's why I should do that. The, and, yeah, yeah, it's a good and bad thing. Um, so this this top, no one signed up for the in-person class. It's okay. Don't worry about it because we were busy enough um, on Saturday. So. What would be the second session of this class? One of the things on our short list for a granny square, something to do with granny squares, was the, the Cozy Days Daisy Blanket. And I picked out three colors of Lana's Quick, 
which is 100% wool from Barocco. It is not super washed, so this would become a felted mess if you tried to make a blanket and throw it in the wash or anything else with it. But I picked out three colors to make a square, and I was like, oh, this is so pretty. So we have an in-person class on July 22nd, which is a Saturday, on how to make the daisy as opposed to a regular classic granny square. If you're interested, contact the shop to sign up. And um, it really doesn't take, like, I was putting it in the newsletter. I want to say it only needs like 50 yards for the whole blanket of the yellow. Like you don't need much of that. And then um, it's the green that you need a butt ton of. You need um, like 900 yards of the green. So the Lana's quick. You'd need a it's, bunch. It's two rows it's on two the Because it's two rows outside. on the outside. So you're using a lot of it. Um, like the green, I have one skein of each just to see what I can get. I've started, but I haven't done the green on this. And I'm imagining I'm only going to get through a few squares before the first skein of um, of green is, is gone. Because Lana's, Lana's Quick is like between a bulky and a super bulky. And um, because the one that they used was a little, I felt a little thicker than a lot of the ones we would call bulky or chunky in our shop. Um, but you still can use the ones that are a little thinner. They'll get you more yardage. They'll get you further. Uh, your your blanket just may not be as chunky, fluffy. Or you know, I'm 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 teaching the class as a single square, not as the whole blanket. Um, it's on an L hook, which is a lot bigger than what I'm using for this one. And you could use that square to make so many different things that are not necessarily a whole blanket's worth of, of yarn. So, yes. You know. And learning on a bigger yarn, bigger hook, sometimes, sometimes is that's... easier. And if you were like, hey, I don't want to make it out of super bulky, you go down and find a size hook and yarn that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to bring uh, a chunky or super bulky yarn to the class to learn. So um, that's an in-person class. I still have thoughts on what I want to do for more videos on the Tips and Tricks channel. I've had some suggestions. This Sunday, is, believe it or not, is our once a month virtual sit and stitch dual platform event. And what that means is sometimes I can't do videos the next day because I'm, cause I'm pooped. Because it's I'm your super tired. really, really got to take really a day off. I really kind of need, and I'm not really taking a day off because I'm still writing my newsletter and stuff. So I want to do more videos on Monday, but I may not be able to do more videos on Monday because we'll be hanging out with y'all who want to come on Facebook Live or Zoom. So um, that is going to be from 1 to 5 p.m. on Sunday. It is the 16th, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom's birthday is right around in there, and I have to let, not lose track of that. Um, but, yeah, it's from 1 to 5 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. And Facebook Live, you just get to see me and hear Zoom. And if you want to get in on Zoom, you use the shop phone number. 828-877-3550. <laughs> you can also use that, that number tonight to get into, it's just on Zoom, no Facebook Live. But to get into our regular Tuesdays and Fridays, we have Sit and Stitch just from 7 to 9 p.m. Again, that's Eastern Time. And that phone number Liz just said gets you in. So, um... I want to make sure I hit some of those things, but, um, that's, that's like the big crazy news of what we've been working on. I brought in my, uh, face summer top cause I'm kind of hoping to add that back in the rotation too. I've uh -huh. got a lot of things going on, but that's normal, I guess. Right. It is. So well for us, for us, you don't have to do that. If you want to, that's awesome. But if, um, one project or just a couple, it makes you happy. You should do what makes you happy. So, I have the beginning of a brown hat. Nice, and that's that flower you've been adding into yes. everything, right? Yes. Now, is, does that flower come from a chart you found, or it you was just a making chart it up? on Pinterest for a, like an African violet pentagon? Okay. Because the Columbia hat is it's based, based on, on a, a granny pentagon. Yeah, five sides. So, um, it it took some, like, okay, so this was the chart. Now, how do I get it to granny? And so, anyway. What's really neat about the daisy, so this guy uses um, only chains and doubles, basically. Mm -hmm. Magic ring to start, or how, like the other ways to start. 
but just chains and doubles for a classic granny square. This one has single crochets. It has little cluster stitches for, uh, and there's different ways to do cluster stitches for, for the um, petals to build from the circle to a square, you're using doubles and half doubles. And then once you're in the outside, this one, so, so a classic granny, your stitches all go into holes to spaces between groups of stitches. This one, to give you that thick look on the edge, you're actually going into the tops of stitches. So when granny squares break away from the traditional sense, then they start doing, end up with a square or a pentagon or different shapes. But there's different ways to get you there to put the fancy stuff in the center. This looks the, to me, this looks like an egg. <laughs> yeah, uh, it does. The, but the it's sunburst, but it's an egg. The sunburst that I did, the sunburst granny. Yes. You had singles, half doubles, doubles, and triples to get it from a circle to a square. So they get fun if you want to. That's that's the thing. This one here, I think there was some singles involved in the collar. And then everything else is a version of those clusters of three double crochets. And it's all into spaces. Like none of it is into tops of stitches and things like that. So anyway, it was really fun to make. And it's loosey goosey and big, but that's because I made it big. So um, I'm gonna suggest we wrap up. Yeah, yeah. So we can go open up the shop and stuff like that. But it was good to see everybody for a little bit or like talk at you for a little bit. <laughs> and, Come to sit and stitch tonight if you'd like to, and we will see you tomorrow. I have no idea what we're doing tomorrow. No. We'll see. I've ordered some new stuff, but it won't be coming in by tomorrow, so we'll have to see what we think we have anything left of to talk about tomorrow. There's there's little bits of yarn here and there. A little bit. Yeah. In the corners. Mm, you know. It's, it's whether it's a yarn that we already have online, because I, I just... <laughs> I'd like to put more yarn up online, and, and that's really challenging. So, anyway, um, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye.